Paris Roubaix, the hell of the north, without question, one of the toughest and most brutal racers in all of cycling. It's long, at over 250 kilometers, but the riders also have to deal with the fearsome cobbled sections, and the weather can be really tough as well. But in such a long, fast, technically demanding and chaotic race, how do the pros find time to eat and what do they eat? Well, to find out the answers to those questions and more, I've come to speak to Trek Segafredo's sports dietitian, Stephanie Searslink. Now, many of us, including myself, are never actually going to race Paris-Roubaix, but hopefully the information that we can find out will be applicable to any long cycling events that we do too. I'm now on the Trek Segafredo team bus and I'm joined by Stephanie, who's going to talk us through the nutrition that the guys use during Roubaix. What what do the guys eat before a, a huge race like Pai Roubaix? Well, everything starts the day before, actually, because in the morning there's not enough time to really load up for something as heavy as uh, Roubaix. So we always start the day before and obviously there's not the no not a lot of training on that day but we try to let them eat as if it was a training day so that their body can actually not burn the carbs and the energy we give them but stock it like a reserve for tomorrow so what sort of things are they eating and what sort of things do they not eat uh, what sort of things do they eat well the focus is on carbs so it means yeah, it's their fuel for tomorrow, so it means bigger quantities of pasta, rice, bread, bananas, oats, mm, cereals, uh, everything that contains carbs. What do they not eat? Uh, French fries, uh, chocolate. Why not? It's not that it's forbidden for them, totally not, but on that day, the more they eat of fat foods, um, the less they will eat of carbs and they that's actually what they need. So they eat bigger quantities than other days, but they don't eat until they get sick. So a lot of recreational cyclists very often think that riders really overload themselves, but that's not actually true. And, and, and how strictly is it monitored? I mean, are, are they weighing the amount of carbohydrates and calculating the exact amounts of carbohydrates that they're, they're taking on? Or is it just kind of like, you know, a bit more relaxed than that. It's a bit more relaxed because they are used to it. So we have like a home nutrition system and on some days at home, they also need to try this out. So when they come to the races, they don't need a scale to measure everything because they actually know how a portion of pasta looks like the day before Roubaix. And you mentioned there, you know, pasta and I've heard other you know, dietitians and, and nutritionists say that the riders are eating pasta, but there's a lot of people watching at home. There's a bit of a trend going on, isn't there? Anti-gluten. You know, what what's what's happening? What are the, are the riders avoiding gluten, or is or is that not a thing? It depends. Every rider is different, and there are riders who feel like they better avoid gluten. So for them, we uh, take rice or we take a pasta because there are. Uh, different kinds of pasta without gluten as well so but it's not something we standardly recommend to eat gluten free it depends on who you are and how you feel about having gluten so moving on to the morning of the race what are the guys then then having for, for breakfast well thanks to the day before they already have energy in their bodies so what do we have most riders have like a mix they don't eat a whole bowl of oats um, overloaded but they eat some oats maybe an egg some bread some pancakes those are really uh, something they they like a lot yeah pancakes are really good because you can if you make them yourself you can choose which kind of fluid so which kind of milk you use you can um, take less uh, eggs and add more carbs so actually that's a good 
thing to do at home as well, but no croissants, not too much bacon and eggs because on that day it might yeah you might be nervous as well and you need carbs so why would you eat other things than that because they're nice (laughs) (laughs) tomorrow you can eat uh, whatever you want but on that day the main focus is on performance so then when we get onto the actual race itself how how much in terms of sort of numbers of 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 calories or whatever are are the riders burning in in a a race like Paris-Roubaix a lot more than what they can take so it means that you need the day before you need your breakfast and you need to refuel every hour to make sure you don't get hunger flat or you don't have any problems the Roubaix guys mostly are have more muscle mass and are heavier so I would say easy seven eight thousand calories they would burn and of course your stomach is the limiting factor so it means that even though you are burning a lot of calories you cannot refill every one of them while you are riding but what you can we try to refill so what what do they eat then during the race and, and how often do they eat? Well, they eat every hour, starting from the beginning. So a lot of recreational cyclists make the mistake by thinking that their breakfast is okay for the first two or three hours. And then when they start feeling hungry and thirsty, they start refilling. But actually, that's too late. So the professional riders, they know that for each hour that they are riding, they can refill up to 90 grams of carbs per hour. Uh, This means 360 calories only while they are burning a lot more every hour. What does that look like in terms of of sort of sports nutrition stuff? Well, most riders prefer on starting with drink and food. And then while they go to the end of the race, in the final, they switch to energy gels. They would drink one bottle at least per hour let's say that the bottle is normally or it contains a normal dose of carbs because you can you can play with that amount so that be what like uh, 40 grams yes 35 grams per bottle so it means that they still need around 50 or 60 extra grams for the first part of the race we always make rice cakes so Actually, it's only rice, so pure... I like rice cakes. Yeah, so pure carbs. Riders like it as well. It's something tasty to eat. It's easy to to eat and to digest as well. Bananas sometimes as well. Or we also have homemade sports cakes. So um, low in fat, but high in carbs. And most riders prefer that food in the first part. Then they switch to energy bars, which are low in fat, low in fiber, low in protein, so only carbs as well. About 20 or 30 grams of carbs per bar. So they would eat like two per hour. And then in the end, when you feel like this is getting heavy or maybe sometimes also dangerous to eat, then a gel is really quick and easy to take. So Roubaix is a very distinct event and it strikes me that it can often be quite hard to eat, especially at certain moments of the race. Like, for example, on the cobbles, you don't want to be reaching into your pockets. And also the weather's often different from later in the year when it's a lot warmer. So how do these things affect what the riders would eat during the, the event? Well, it, it does affect it. What we do is not actually change the food a lot, but we can play with the drink. So you could add some more energy into the drink uh, because we use a formula we have an Enervit drink who has a formula which you can go up to more carbs in the same volume without stomach issues and this makes that you don't have to eat anymore or not that much anymore in a massive event like Roubaix you know how much caffeine are the riders taking and, and, and when do they take it It depends from rider to rider because most of them already feel a little bit stressed and then caffeine 
sometimes is like too much added to that. So some of them start with caffeine already. So it means, uh, yeah, obviously we always have coffee with us in the team. Um, so it can be coffee, but we also have like uh, caffeine shots. And then during the race, we have gels with caffeine in it, but it takes about half an hour to get to the peak. And then this peak continues for, it depends from rider to rider, but for about two or three hours, but the peak can go down again. So that's why in the race, we try to get that peak again with the gel that gives you some carbs as well, some minerals, but also it's really individually. I think um, also as a recreational cyclist, it's best to test it in training to see because some guys don't need a lot to already feel the difference and then others need a little bit more. Do any of the riders have um, sort of, I don't know, weird requests or weird things that they like to eat? Because I know, like, so Connor Dunn, who, who works with us, he loves peanut butter and jam sandwiches, swears by them. Yeah, we have some riders that like them as well. Um, really weird preferences, not really, but um, what I always try to recommend, and I, uh, the chef and me, we try to give a lot of variety, but we have a lot of Italian riders and they prefer pasta. Always pasta and and it's okay, it's just, that I think that it's good to have some variety, but um, in the end, they still <laughs> prefer the pasta. Not on the bike, though. Uh, not on the bike, no. <laughs> After the race is finished, um, I guess it's all about recovery then, because these guys have got to do other races. <laughs> Um, so what, what food are they taking on as soon as the race is over? The first thing we do is to give them protein and carbs in a fluid formula because um, it works really fast. So if you would say, um, I come into the bus and I eat chicken and rice, that's protein and carbs, but that comes into your stomach, then you need some digestion, then when the protein and the carbs finally arrive in your muscles, it's so many hours later so that takes way too long so we try to we have like um, a protein shake a recovery shake it's a combination of protein and carbs together so it works really fast it goes immediately into your muscles and they can start recovering this doesn't replace your meal so it means you take this first and then you take your shower and then we have depending on what type of race it was, because for example, in the Tour de France, uh, we have stages that are just with a flat profile. We have uh, time trials, we have mountain stages. So depending on what type of race it was, the recovery meal depends on what you did today. Dinner later that day depends on what kind of stage is it tomorrow. Something that I found quite interesting was you, you were saying that the right, you know, it's important to get the with the recovery. It's important to get the carbohydrates in and the protein. And I think a lot of people who who are watching this might be wanting to lose weight, and they think that oh, I won't have any carbohydrates. I will just recover and just have protein. I mean, is that a is that a good thing or a bad thing? What? Well, in some periods, uh, for example, winter. We also have riders who say, okay, I gained a little bit weight and I want to lose it again. But what we will never save on is recovery. Because if even as a recreational cyclist, if you say, okay, I want my body weight, my body fat percentage, because you obviously you don't want to lose your muscle mass. If you want to lose some weight, some body fat, then it's always important to keep your training quality high. So I mean, before, during and after your training session, you should do what is best for your training. And then later, after training, you can see, okay, how am I going to do this? So at the end of the day, you need to create an energy deficit. It means that you need to eat a little bit less than what you need, but you cannot make the difference before, during and after your session because then you will lose training quality as well and then you might get, you might lose weight but you're 
not the better rider. So how long does it take, you know, the, the pro riders to recover from a massive effort like Paris-Roubaix? It depends on how the race was for you, but um, we are lucky that the next day they don't need to race again. And Roubaix is the, like the last one of the Flemish classics, but it t- takes some time. Yes, um, I would say if you've loaded up very well, if you've eaten and you drank what you needed, during the race, if you take your recovery shake, some extra supplements, of course, um, and then maybe you had a party because you had a good race, uh, I think a couple of days later, you will feel back to normal again. How do you rate a massive portion of frites as a recovery strategy after Pyru Bay? I think uh, since the next days there is not an important race to come and if you took your uh, recovery shake first then you might have fries and enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent news. Right, thanks very much for your time Stephanie, great talking to you. you. See you later. So there you have it. That was Trek Segafredo's nutrition strategy for Paris-Roubaix. I hope you found this informative. And if you have, then please give it a like. And hopefully you've learned some things that you can apply to your own monster rides. But I'll tell you what, all this talk of like eating and fueling, it's just made me hungry. So I'm, uh, I'm going to get some food. Bye.